Well, we've talked a lot about uh, tyranny in various ways. And if you've been watching in the news, you know, the World Health Organization is, uh, is, is pushing forward with the international health regulations that was just adopted, 62 pages long. It's going to be voted on in a year. And, and I want you to kind of to, to respond to this, but I want I wanted to hear from the uh, inspector general there of the uh, World Health Organization. He, he is at... Uh, the World Government Summit in February, and he's going to talk about this document. And what I want you to notice with me, he talks about the legal authority of it. Okay, so just just listen to this. I was honored to be here in December last year for COP28, the first COP to include a day dedicated to health. And I thank the UAE for its leadership in giving health such a prominent place in climate agenda. It was the first of its kind. And thank you, UAE, for being a pathfinder. 147 countries signed the COP28 UAE Declaration on Climate and Health, recognizing that the climate crisis is a health crisis. And as things stand, the world remains unprepared for the next disease X and the next pandemic. If it struck tomorrow, we would face many of the same problems we faced with COVID-19. It's for this reason that in December 2021, WHO's member states met in Geneva and agreed to develop an international agreement on pandemic preparedness and response, a legally binding pact to work together to keep themselves and each other safe. A legally binding pact to keep everybody safe. And as you read through the document, he gets to make a lot of the decisions. So my question to you is this, is this is this kind of the, the, the inception? I mean, when you were studying Bible prophecy in seminary and so forth, were you thinking it would be through the World Health Organization we'd see the world's coming together, surrendering <laughs> sovereignty and power to outside organizations like that? I'm just, I'm just kind of blown away. Well, no, it makes too. a lot of sense, though, because, you know, what do people care about more than their health? You know, really, right. the World Health Organization really superseded the UN in a lot of ways. You know, the United Nations talks about a lot of things that, you know, people, well, I don't care about that. I don't care what's happening over in that part of the world. When you start talking about your health or right. pandemics or you know, these crises or bird flu or whatever the next one of these things is, everyone's concerned about that. And everybody wants this idea of being safe. And sadly, you know, most people have bought into the whole, you know, climate change alarmism as well. It's interesting though, we said 147 countries signed that. I'd like to know how many of them are actually doing anything about it, though. Right. I bet it's not very many. But yeah, you know, it's when you when it gets to your health. I mean, that's that's uh, you know that that's there's nothing more important than that. I mean, so these are the kind of things they're they're trying to find crises right. that they can leverage to create fear and create compliance uh, in people's lives and through climate change, which you know claims an existential crisis and things like health. That's how you kind of kind of leverage leverage that. I think to get more control. So, Janice, is I think it's brilliant. I do. Uh, the whole idea of uh, uniting around health, as Mark said, that's of interest to every single person. Uh, by the way, Tedros Ghebreyesus, spokesman there, he's really he's an Ethiopian Marxist terrorist, and he could be the end up being the leader of the organization that unites the world. Just think about that for a minute. Not a righteous man. I mean, anything but. An Ethiopian Marxist terrorist could be the one handpicked to be the single leader of an organization that unites the world. That's something I didn't plan on. Yeah, and if you're an American, you know you didn't vote for him, and there's really no appeal process as you read down through these documents and so forth. So this was adopted, and what's next? I don't think we know, but what we do know, uh, Mark, is this will sound funny, but it isn't, is bird flu is on the horizon. In other words, another pandemic is on the horizon. And they're already stirring up the fears. I've seen headlines that are astounding. Well, most of them aren't true, but they are scaring everybody to start worrying about the next pandemic. 
so that this World Health Organization will come riding into town to save us all. I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Be prepared. Get acquainted with what we're talking about. It's coming. Well, it can be based on nothing. So some of you may have seen the uh, hearings they had just in Congress a couple of days ago. Dr. Anthony Fauci was there again. Yeah, yeah. And they talked about the, you know, back during the COVID pandemic, which we all referred to well, they had the six foot, you know, distancing. And I still, you know, I'm still going places now where they have the deal still on the floor. They haven't yeah. taken off yet. And they asked him there about that. And it was, it was not based on, on any, 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 any foundation at all. In fact, he said, there's no way you could actually ever do research and actually ever prove that to be true. So this whole thing that, you know, it's always believe the science, believe us. It was based on nothing. And he admitted it's based on nothing. Yeah, and so everybody's right. doing that. And you got to be six feet away from everybody and all the different things that took place. So it just shows how easily these things can be manipulated. People just kind of speak from on high and they say, well, if you don't follow me, you're not following the science. In fact, at one point, he even says, I am science. Yeah. That's right. He said it when I am science. Well, the, where'd this six foot thing come from? He just made it up. Yeah. And so it just shows how, you know, and it, it affected the world. It affected the entire world, the, these types of things. So you know, if you can make something up that's that simple and that foolish, think of how much, what, what you can really do. And, and think about with COVID. I mean, I know some of you here may have lost loved ones, and I'm not trying to minimize it. But with bird flu, the, the, when, it, when it has broken out in, among humans, which hasn't been very often, half the people who get it die. So it's much different. So you get something that's, that, that, they can, that they unleash in some kind of gain of uh, function into the general public that's like that. You talk about fear. Yeah. You know, then and, and anything people, anything someone says people will do. You know, to try to try to save their lives and save their loved ones. So, you know, these are the kind of things we're facing. And, and I think climate change, it's, it's, it's existential threat. These, uh, by the way, you know, 75% of these new diseases are zoonotic diseases. Yeah. They're spillover diseases from animals to humans, which is it. It is interesting in the, the fourth seal judgment, the fourth of the earth dies by the sword, by famine and by the wild beasts of the earth, which I think is interesting. Yeah. Well, this document's been adopted, and now they're going to be pushing to uh, get all the countries on board, vote on it next year at the 78th uh, annual meeting. But I think Jan's right. I think if there was all of a sudden, oh, no, the bird flu or something, well, you might be able to push it into place a little sooner and have an emergency meeting. Here is Alex Newman. He's meeting with uh, Dr. Uh, Brian Hooker, who's a, uh, a professional uh, uh, in this whole area, and he's written some books on... Uh, true science, and he's responding to this whole thing about gain of function. Um, I thought this helpful. Watch this. Before we leave the subject of bird flu, and we've only got a couple minutes left in this segment, uh, I, I saw the former CDC director, uh, Robert Redfield. He, he actually, over two years ago, he warned that he thought bird flu may be the big one. Right? He said COVID will look like nothing compared to the possibility of bird flu. And more recently, uh, I saw him talking about the possibility of weaponizing the bird flu. He said it would actually, based on existing technology, uh, the, the sequences that have been published, it wouldn't be that difficult to do through this gain of function process, weaponize the bird flu to make it very, very deadly. Um, are you concerned that there may be laboratories uh, around the world, either in China or, or even here, who knows, uh, uh, right. working on this kind of project for nefarious purposes? I'm absolutely concerned. There are, um, there are five, at least, excuse me, four uh, laboratories in the United States that are doing gain-of-function research on H1, uh, H5N1 bird flu right now. One of them is the influenza division at the CDC. So our own Centers for Disease Control is actually taking the virus, passaging it through ferrets, a mammalian model that is very, very close immunologically to humans. And then at the end of that experiment, then they passage it to human lung cells. They grow human lung cells in culture, and then they'll see if it can actually transmit from the ferrets to the human lung cells. So they're trying to humanize this virus. They're trying to make it transmissible in humans in under the guise of, of being able to be prepared with a vaccine that would you know, um, uh, protect against this clade of virus. Is that the depravity of man that we want to control things? I mean... Uh just help me kind of sort this out. We got scientists in all these different countries. They're trying to create gain of function stuff, but they're going to, that could kill all of us. 
but then they got a vaccine so that they could heal all of us or control us. I mean, it, well, part of uh, what this World Health Organization will do once it takes control would be force force vaccines on everyone. So this comes along and it's immediately a forced vaccine. I mean, there's no end to that, but that's just going back to more of the tyranny of what could be coming. So again, we're not trying to be sensational. This is a headline uh, online. Let's say, here we go. WHO warns new bird flu strain jumping to humans uh, following the death of so-and-so. The WHO's press release paints a grim picture, a man with multiple underlying health conditions in which he succumbs to the new strain of this illness. Again, fear tactics. Um, it was very effective four years ago and three years ago and two years ago. Uh, <laughs> coming back. Well, the other thing, I mean, for, for the leaders, it's tyranny and it's power, but for lots of, a lot of other people, it's money. Yes. I mean, billions and billions of dollars, you know, made from this. So uh, that's, that's, what, that's what a lot of it comes down to. And there, there, there are certain people that want to use it for power. Yeah. Many, many other people, it just it comes down to, to money. And, uh, the love of know, money is root of all sorts of evils, yeah, right? That's right. Sure, it is. Yeah. So yeah. We, you know, that's what we see. I mean, people, will, you know, they'll do any. Well, just like we heard about these elites, will do anything to steal an election. People will do anything to make money. It's 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 the it's the, the human heart, the depravity of, of the human heart, and I mean, no, it knows no bounds.